All right, so Apple uh, pushing back some major Siri upgrades all the way to 2026. And uh, we're not just talking about, you know, a simple delay. This is about the future of how we interact with all of our Apple devices, thanks to something called Apple Intelligence. Yeah, you know, it's interesting because Tim Cook hinted at a more capable Siri, uh, mm -hmm. the, you know, rolling out sooner than that. Now we're hearing 2026. So what's the real story here? Yeah, so we've got a whole stack of reports here. To unpack exactly why this is happening, we'll look at the tech challenges, we'll look at the competition, and even explore, you know, how Apple is approaching this upgrade from a development standpoint. Yeah, let's start with, you know, why this delay is happening. It might seem like Apple is dragging their feet, but it's uh, it's actually more complex than that. Okay, so let's unpack that a little bit. Yeah, so to understand the delay, you have to understand just how ambitious this project is. Okay. Apple wants to build a Siri that's not just reactive, but proactive. A Siri that can anticipate your needs and seamlessly connect you with the information and services you use every day. Think about Siri working within third-party apps. You know, no more jumping back and forth. Yeah, that would be huge. Yeah. I can already imagine, like, asking Siri to book a restaurant that my friend recommended on their food blog, all without leaving my podcast app. Exactly. But to do that, Apple needs to integrate advanced machine learning. Uh, that's where the system learns from data to get better over time with on-device processing and secure cloud infrastructure. Oh, okay, hold on. Can we break that down a little bit? For those of us who aren't software engineers, what's the difference between on-device processing and the cloud, and why does it matter for this? Sure. So on-device processing means that Siri can handle some tasks directly on your iPhone or iPad without needing to send data to Apple servers. Okay. This is really important for both privacy, keeping your data on your device, and performance, meaning that Siri can respond quicker. So it's like having a mini brain in your phone. Yeah, in a way, yeah. But some tasks require more power or access to more data than your device can handle alone. That's where the cloud comes in. The cloud is basically a network of powerful servers that can do heavy lifting, like processing complex requests or storing large amounts of data. So Apple is trying to combine the best of both worlds, the privacy and speed of on-device processing, with the power and flexibility of the cloud. Exactly. But making all of that work together seamlessly while maintaining Apple's high standards for performance and reliability is a huge undertaking. And you add to that the fact that they are pushing the boundaries of what AI can do, and you are bound to run into some unexpected hurdles. So this isn't just Apple being slow. It's about getting it right, even if it takes a little bit longer. But let's be honest, the tech world moves fast. While Apple is working on this, you know, super Siri, aren't they worried about falling behind the competition? That's a great question. Yeah, the competition is fierce. Uh, you know, Google's Gemini model is constantly evolving and getting smarter. And Amazon just made a big move by revamping Alexa, offering free access to all their Prime members. Wow. Okay, so Apple's got some serious ground to cover, even with this delay. But uh, don't they have some advantages, too? I mean, they've always been known for their you know, sleek design and user-friendly approach. Absolutely. Apple has a few key advantages that could really make a difference in this AI assistant game. Mm -hmm. You know, first, their tight integration of hardware and software. They control the entire ecosystem, from the chips in your iPhone to the operating system that runs it. Mm. This gives them a level of control that Google and Amazon, who rely on a wider range of devices and partners, just don't have. So they can fine-tune everything to work perfectly together, no more clunky integrations or compatibility issues. Exactly. And this tight integration extends to the user experience as well. Apple is known for its intuitive design and ease of use, and they're likely to apply that same philosophy to Siri. So you think this new Siri will be even easier to use than the current version? I think that's their goal. They want to make Siri so intuitive and helpful that you'll actually want to use it all the time. Imagine Siri becoming your go-to tool for everything from scheduling appointments to controlling your smart home devices. Okay, I'm starting to see how this could be a game changer, but let's shift gears for a second and talk about something that's been on my mind, data. With Siri becoming this super-powered assistant that's integrated into every aspect of our digital lives, doesn't that mean Apple will have access to even more of our personal information? That's a valid concern, and it's something Apple is very aware of. Remember, they've built their reputation on privacy. They've repeatedly emphasized that they don't want to be in the business of collecting and selling your data. So how do they plan to square that circle? How can they build a truly intelligent assistant without having access to mountains of personal data? That's the challenge, isn't it? And it's one of the reasons this project is so complex. Apple is exploring ways to leverage on-device processing to minimize the amount of data that needs to be sent to the cloud. 
They're also looking at techniques like differential privacy, which allows them to analyze data trends without identifying individual users. So it's like blurring the lines between personal data and general trends? Exactly. They're trying to find ways to train Siri on vast amounts of data without compromising individual privacy. It's a delicate balancing act, but if they can pull it off, it could set a new standard for the industry. Okay, so this is all very impressive from a technical standpoint, but let's bring it back down to earth. What does this actually mean for the average user? Think about all the things you do on your devices every day. Check, email, browse the web, listen to music shop online, manage your calendar, and so on. Now imagine Siri becoming your co-pilot for all of those activities. Like having a personal assistant who knows your preferences and can anticipate your needs. It's exactly. Siri could help you find information faster, automate tedious tasks, and make your digital life smoother and more efficient. I can see how that would be appealing, but what about those of us who are a little less tech savvy? Will we be left behind? Apple is aiming to make this technology accessible to everyone, regardless of their technical expertise. They want Siri to be so easy to use that it feels natural and intuitive, even for people who are new to voice assistants. So you're saying Siri won't just be for techies? Exactly. They envision it as a tool that can empower everyone to get more done and enjoy their digital lives more fully. But what about jobs? Won't this lead to widespread job displacement if AI can handle so many of the tasks that humans currently do? That's a complex question, and okay. there are no easy answers. It's true that AI will likely automate some jobs, especially those that involve repetitive or predictable tasks, but it will also create new opportunities in fields like AI development data science and user experience design. So it's more about a shift in the job market rather than outright job loss. Exactly. It's crucial that we adapt to this changing landscape by investing in education and training programs that equip people with the skills they need to thrive in the future workforce. Okay, so we've talked about the technical side, the privacy concerns, and the potential impact on users, but what about the bigger picture? How will all of this affect the tech industry as a whole? Apple's push into advanced AI is likely to have a ripple effect across the entire industry. Other tech giants like Google, Amazon, and Microsoft will be watching closely and will likely accelerate their own AI development efforts to keep pace. So it's like a race to the top. In a way, yes, this competition will drive innovation and yeah. lead to even more sophisticated and powerful AI applications in the years to come. But isn't there a risk that this race could also lead to ethical shortcuts or a disregard for user privacy? That's a valid concern. Yeah. And it's something we need to be vigilant about as AI becomes more powerful. It's crucial that we have open and honest conversations about the ethical implications and ensure that these technologies are developed and used responsibly. So we need to be thinking not just about what AI can do, but what it should do. Precisely. We need to establish clear guidelines and regulations to ensure that AI is used for good and that it benefits all of humanity. All right. So we've covered a lot of ground here, but I want to bring it back to you, the listener, one last time. Imagine a world where your digital assistant can truly understand your needs, anticipate your requests, and seamlessly manage your life across devices. It's a future that's both exciting and a little bit daunting, but it's a future that's coming, whether we're ready for it or not. And the choices we make today will determine what that future looks like. So we spent this deep dive talking about Apple's plans for Siri, but it all comes down to this, what does it actually look like in your daily life? Let's say you're planning a trip right now. You're probably jumping between, you know, different apps and websites to book flights, find hotels, research activities. Yeah, but imagine if you just told Siri where you want to go and what you're interested in. And it pulls together all the information you need, makes personalized recommendations, and even handles the booking process for you. No more, you know, endless tabs and comparison shopping. That sounds incredibly convenient, but I can't help but think, do we lose something in that process? You know, part of the fun of planning a trip is the discovery, you know, the unexpected detours you find along the way. That's a really great point. And it gets at the heart of what Apple is trying to achieve here. It's not about replacing human agency. It's about giving you the tools to be more efficient and focus on what matters most to you. So maybe Siri helps you narrow down your choices, present you with options that truly fit your preferences so you can then spend your time exploring those in more depth. So it's more about collaboration than automation. Exactly. Siri becomes like a super-powered travel agent working alongside you to create the perfect trip and think about the possibilities beyond travel. Imagine Siri helping you manage your finances, learn a new skill, or even just stay on top of your daily tasks and goals. It starts to feel like Siri is not just an assistant, but almost a partner in navigating life. But that brings up another question for me right now when I, when I need to learn something. 
I do the research, I sift through information for my own opinions. What happens when Siri becomes our main source of information? This is one of the biggest questions facing AI development, and it's something Apple is very aware of. If Siri is curating the information we see, filtering it based on our preferences and past behavior, yeah. there's a risk of creating what's called a filter bubble. You only see what the algorithm thinks you want to see, potentially reinforcing existing biases or limiting your worldview. Yeah, that's a little unsettling. It makes you realize just how much responsibility comes with this level of AI integration. It's not just about convenience. It's about shaping how we understand the world. Exactly. And that's why transparency is crucial. Users need to understand how these systems are making decisions, what data they're using, and have the ability to adjust those settings, break out of those bubbles when they want to. So it's almost like a partnership between the developers and the users. Apple builds the tools, but we as individuals have to be mindful of how we use them and the potential impact they can have on our lives and our thinking. Exactly. We're all part of shaping this future. And that's what makes it such a fascinating time to be following AI development. Mm. There are still so many unknowns, so many ethical considerations to grapple with, mm. but the potential is truly transformative. We've covered a lot of ground today from the technical challenges to the competitive landscape to the ethical implications. But ultimately the question is, what does this all mean for you? As we wrap up this deep dive, I want to leave you with one final thought. Mm. Imagine Siri, not just as a voice assistant, but as a true digital companion capable of understanding not just your tasks, but your emotions, your goals, your aspirations. Yeah. What would that look like? What would you want from a Siri that's truly integrated into your life? It's a question worth pondering. The Siri upgrade is more than just a software update. It's a glimpse into a future where technology is more personalized, more intuitive, and more deeply intertwined with our lives than ever before. Whether that future is exciting, daunting, or a bit of both is up to each of us to decide Thanks for joining us on this deep dive. Until next time, keep exploring, keep questioning, and keep learning.